Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Transport Fever! I certainly hope you're having a wonderful day, because I'm certainly excited to be back in the great American plains, where things are going kind of okay, to be honest. You might be able to hear it in my voice that my throat is still completely shot. If you watched yesterday's City Skylines video, you'll have heard a little bit more about that. And I have to say, my throat's definitely better today than it was yesterday, but it's still not in a great place. So just be advised that there will probably be a few points throughout the video where my throat just gives out, where I have to clear my throat, or where, you know, my voice goes all over the place. That's just gonna happen. I completely threw my throat out a couple of nights ago uh, with some voice acting I was doing, essentially. Uh, wasn't the best idea. I've seen a couple of people suggest I get a vocal coach. I don't think I need a vocal coach. I think I just need to be more responsible with when I choose to rest my voice because I haven't really done that recently. Anyway, today... Well, today I would like to spend some money. I'd like to spend a lot of money. Because what I'm thinking is it might very well be time to go ahead and have a train line, a passenger train line run from Chicago to Miami to Tallahassee to Arlington. We're not going to go to Modesto. We'll have, a tr we'll have a bus go back and forth there. So what I'm thinking is we bring up the overlay that shows us where people are living and we basically add a passenger train station to somewhere like there. Like this this road over here is kind of in a really good spot for it, if I'm honest. Uh, it's, all, it's also in a good spot because it runs alongside an existing train line, so that's kind of useful. Uh, what I'm thinking we could do is something like this, though. So it's it's sort of going to be in its own little stretch of, uh, of grind there, something like that, basically. So I think we're going to do that. I think it is going to be sort of an end station. We could add it there. Definitely an option. Might make things a bit weird for the uh, for the tunnel though. I don't know. Maybe we don't. Maybe we put it over here. It's a little bit more central. No, I'm I'm definitely thinking this location right at the end there. Boom, train station right there. Then we need to do the same thing in Tallahassee. And what I'm thinking is we bulldoze that road, and we get ourselves one of these stations, and we rotate it. So it's pretty much straight on with that road. Now, yeah, that's going to destroy some buildings, but let's be honest, we have the money to be able to afford to do this. So right there. And then we need the same treatment in Miami, which is going to be slightly trickier because, of course, the houses in Miami are down here. So maybe what we do here is maybe we have the train sort of come in, then go out. Maybe it's an end station in Miami. Definitely an option. Uh, but what I'm thinking is we just throw the station itself like there and go across the roads. I don't know. I don't know if that's a good idea. I think we're going to do it anyway, though. So right there, uh, we're going to get ourselves a medium street connecting it to there. And then the train itself, I mean, we'll, we'll deal with that in a second. We do need to go in and upgrade to high-speed tracks, though, for all of those stations. So just like so. I'm probably going to want to upgrade the length of the stations as well, now that I think about it. So, uh, we'll upgrade you. You're going to have two tracks. You're going to be 240 meters long. And you are going to have electricity running on those tracks as well. Then just over here, similar story. Upgrade to two tracks, 240. And apply. Then a similar story over in Miami as well. We are going to upgrade to two tracks, high speed, 240. Can't actually be done here, which is a bit of an issue. Uh, oh dear. Maybe we'll go with 160 on that one then. That'll be fine. Shouldn't be too much of an issue. Uh, so what we do need to do though, is we need to get our train lines in here with the, uh, with the electricity running on them. Now that road right there is not gonna work. So we're gonna need to get rid of that road. So let's bring this back as best we can. It's going to be kind of expensive to do this, but that's just the way it's going to have to be. So that's going to come out to there, and this one is going to come down to there. And then I kind of want them to connect over to this bit of track here. So it's going to have to sort of curve around, but that'll go real slow if I do that. 
But I think we're just gonna have to do that, to be honest. We'll look into it in a moment. Let's focus on, you know, getting the train lines through here to start with. So that one goes to there, and that one goes to there. Demolishing a couple of buildings, of course. And I think what I might do is actually have these sort of come up and absolutely... Ooh, dear, this is going a bit weird. Uh, let's bring this back a little bit. So have it go to there. For sure. So that's going to be the first sort of extension there. And what we need to do is bring this one along to the end. And then this needs to sort of come up and meet this train track over here. That's kind of what I'm going for. I want it. I don't want it to be on the same section of track. I just want it to run alongside that track. So just like that. It's going to curve in and we're going to have, you know, four tracks running alongside each other. Which I think will be pretty cool looking. Obviously, these trains are going to need to slow down going around this, uh, this band here. But that's all right. I'm not too worried about that. So you're going to go to there. And then this is going to be extended just the whole way along uh, to about there, I reckon, if I can get that to work. There we go. So to about there. And we're going to do the same, and we're basically going to connect everything up. I think you get the idea, so let's get it done. Okay, that took a while, but the job is done. We now have a train line that runs from Chicago all the way to Arlington via Miami and Tallahassee. So, the next step is going to be to get ourselves a train that's actually going to run that line. So we'll come over here to the depot and we'll see what we can do. Because I'm thinking we want to get, uh, we want to go for multiple units. We probably want to get this thing again. It's quite powerful, quite strong. Uh, so we'll go for pink on this, I think. So we'll get ourselves that. And then for the actual wagons, I mean... Well, we could go for this, 33 passengers, 21 passengers on that. I'm sort of looking at this, though, and thinking, you know, 33 passengers could be interesting. Only 87 miles per hour, though, versus 125 on that. So let's go for the 125. And let's see if we can get one, two, three. I'll be 63 passengers, 84 passengers. Let's go for over 100 passengers on that one train. And we're going to set that on the Chicago to Arlington line and out it goes so the front of the train doesn't look any different in pink the back bits are certainly interesting in pink but we should see this thing do some interesting stuff we should see you know good stuff come of a, uh, a super long train I also realized didn't I recently switch all my uh, my trains for the electric yeah I did switch them for those a little more you know, standard looking ones, but I, I guess this kind of works. I guess this is kind of okay. This is more of a cross-country train anyway, so... We'll stick with that for the time being. I think it looks kind of cool. So that's not going to cross over those tracks. And is now well on its way to Miami. Now what I'm thinking is that we do need to get some... Buses going around the, the likes of Miami and Tallahassee, so people can actually get to the train. Probably a similar story in Arlington, to be honest. Uh, so let's have a little look. Arlington does have a bus loop. So what I'm thinking we do is we come in here and we add a bus stop just there. So in that spot. And then we go to the Arlington loop. And where do we want to add this? So after stop two, which is 7th Street, we want to go ahead and add that right there. So there we go. You can now get a bus to the train station in Arlington. Which is beautiful stuff. The trains, by the way, not going to be that popular. Because, obviously, they have a considerable distance to cover. And that is going to take a, a considerable amount of time. But eventually... Eventually, we'll get there. And eventually, they will become a bit more popular. I've just got the 757, which is beautiful stuff. It's actually pulling up here, which is interesting. Picked up a couple of people. Fair enough. So it's going to go about its business. We'll close that because we don't really need planes right now. Uh, actually, in saying that, there's 23 people wanting to use the airport there. And eight coming in on that plane. So, I mean, maybe we could upgrade to the 757 rather than the 737 that we have here. That is definitely a uh, possibility. 
Yeah, 21 people on board. Okay. So, I mean, we could get the Concorde. I did see a lot of people wanting me to get the Concorde. Very, very fast plane, obviously. Uh, I'm definitely tempted. Definitely thinking about it. 757 can carry, you know, 55 passengers versus the 24 in the Concorde, but the Concorde is twice as fast. Uh, it is also, eh, you know what? I'm definitely, I'm thinking we might get a Concorde. Let's get a Concorde in orange and set that on uh, that line right there. Stupidly expensive, but it's such a cool looking plane that I don't think I can really say no. As for upgrading this airport, uh, I would love to. I'd love to be able to get this thing upgraded to, you know, a proper looking, proper looking airport, but that's kind of not an option because the, the terrain can't be aligned. I mean, I absolutely can go in and, uh, as six passengers, I absolutely can go in and start editing the terrain if I want to, I believe. I just, you know, I'm not entirely sure how easy that would be. Because looking at this, I mean, that is barely moving the terrain. I could lower a lot of it, I suppose. And see what we can do. So if I just go around lowering a lot of this, I mean, it's very, very expensive to do this, but we kind of... We kind of do have the money. So lower a lot of that in sort of cliff-looking things. Kind of like that. And then, can we upgrade you to that? Unable to align terrain. Yeah, it's all of this back here is the problem. Like, there's a lot of terrain would need sort of cut away there. It's almost tempting to just build a new airport. Because that is a thing we could probably do. Oh, good lord. This thing is huge. Uh, could I get a new airport right here? Doesn't actually look like it, does it? Could I get it there? No, could I get it over there? Oh boy, that so so the airport for Arlington is gonna have to be I don't know where it's gonna have to be, but it's not gonna be able to be there either. Oh boy. That's Okay, so it could be there. Okay. Uh let's move Arlington Airport to be there. And then what we can do is we can go into the air line, I guess. We're going to add a stop in Arlington, then we're going to take out Arlington East. Did I just delete everything? I think I did. Uh, so add that and then add the Santa Rosa one back. So like that. So there we go. We have the line back up and running. We're going to a different airport in Arlington, which is fine by me. Going to bulldoze the old one. And I'm also going to uh, look into the bus line that used to bring people that way because we do need to extend it out so that people can get a bus to, well, there, essentially. So uh, we'll have that go there. If we go to the Arlington Loop, after stop number five, we need a bus to go to there. So that should be fine. So people can now get out to the new airport in Arlington. Which is good. It's it's a good looking airport. I'm also thinking that I might go into the, uh, the this line here, look at the vehicles and say that maybe, maybe one of these can be sold. Might not be the worst idea in the world to sell one of the smaller planes. In fact, sell the other one as well. We'll sell both of those. Train 2 has reached its lifespan. Can I get over there and have a look at it? So it's this one. It's the one that moves the oil back and forth. Okay. Go back to depot. And we'll see what we can do with train number 2. Because it's really not been making us that much money anyway. So I don't think it's going to be that much of a shame if we uh, happen to get rid of it. As for right here, I mean, 25 people currently waiting for that train. The train's coming through here at the moment. How many people are going to be on board is my question. 27. How much money do we get for 27 people transported on that line? That's my question. So, 256,000. That's really not much. The frequency of this line really, really does need to be higher, doesn't it? That is going to be a thing we need to look into. 
As for you, you're heading back to the depot to be sold, which is fine. A couple of people waiting here for a plane. They're going to be waiting for the Concorde, which it, eight minutes isn't bad. Very expensive, uh, that line. Not making money as well, that line. Uh, but that's all right. As for the fuel from Arlington to Chicago line, it's not been doing much. Uh, let's change this to say Chicago to Miami to uh, Tallahassee to Arlington. Okay. So it's 16 minutes. That's why it's not going to be doing much. Same with this one. The frequency on this line is quite low as well. Like five minutes is a bit much. So I'm feeling like we want to get another one of those vehicles. And we probably want to get another train onto the this line here as well. To be honest, it's going to be very expensive, but it's probably worth doing. As for the fuel from Arlington to Chicago, I mean, that's that's a tricky one right there because we do... If we can get more vehicles on it, that line's going to have a greater frequency, which means that they're going to produce a bit more, but... They weren't really producing much to begin with, so that's that's kind of tricky. Uh, I think what we'll do... Oh, wow. There's a lot of people waiting around here. I think what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to sell you for a start. Then we're going to buy ourselves... If we go to multiple units, we're going to buy another one of these. And we're going to set that on the Lafayette Chicago Santa Rosa line. Just to bring up the frequency of that line, because it's not quite where it wants, uh, where I want it to be. What's the top speed of that train, actually? I didn't have a look. 120. Okay. Let me buy... I'm going to get three of those in orange. And I'm going to put those on the Chicago, Miami, Tallahassee, Arlington line. And we'll see how that goes. Because then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this train. I'm going to say, you know what? Just go sell yourself. Basically. Uh, it's currently waiting for a free path, which might cause some issues because it's currently sitting on the wrong side of the track. Um, maybe a little crossover point would be useful. So that train can maybe, you know, go ahead and actually cross over onto the correct side. Uh, we are potentially going to see some issues here because I don't know what that train's going to be able to do. So you're going to come in and you're going to go... Yeah. Can you turn around and head back? Let's just put you on the... Um, let's put you back in that line. Turn you around and go that way. And then what we'll do is we'll have that train... Go ahead and go back to the depot when it gets to... Oh, wow. It's going to have to go the whole way to Arlington before it actually gets an opportunity to turn around. That's kind of a problem. That is uh, that is definitely kind of a problem. Maybe what we do is we slow the game down so they all keep running. But what I'll do is I'm going to throw a train depot uh, somewhere else. So, actually, let me just pause while I do this. Maybe we throw a train depot into Miami. So, we'll throw it just there. It doesn't need to be, you know, perfectly aligned or anything. It's just going to be out there. As for the lines coming out of it, I mean, simple, really. Uh, that one's going to go to there. And this one's going to go to there. Essentially. Uh, and then what we need to do is we need to connect this up so that trains coming in this way can actually sort of branch off a bit. So you need to be able to branch off that way and then go around and merge into that line. A little bit messy, but that's okay. As for here, kind of similar story, really. So I want... Uh, a train here to be able to just kind of go like that, really. And that should be fine. So let's get the signal set up correctly. We're going to want a signal there. We're going to want a signal there. And we're going to want a signal potentially there. So that right there should do it. 
that should be all we need to do. So if I send you by to the depot to sell yourself, you are gonna keep going straight on, and you'll sell yourself in the depot in, sorry, not Miami, Tallahassee. Which is exactly what we want, because we have those other trains on the line already. Uh, so the frequency there is five minutes, the frequency here is three minutes. That's good. That's that's where we want it to be. Yeah, I I, I definitely want the uh, the frequencies around those numbers because it means that people are just going to be more keen to use the train lines. Like, look at Tallahassee. There's 35 people waiting right there, which is beautiful stuff. Then down in uh, Arlington, there's 41 people. If we look at the airport, there's absolutely no one. Which is a problem. Uh, 12 people on Concord, though. So I'm wondering just how much money Concord's actually going to make us there. Because it might be something. Might be nothing, but we'll find out. Two million. That's actually not bad. As for you, you've got 55 people on board. That's kind of nuts right there. So I'm expecting some pretty good money from... Uh, from these trains, to be honest. There's what? 51 people right there? 527k. That's not bad. That is not bad. Okay, I'm going to say that train line's kind of a success. My biggest concern at the moment, though, has to be the fact that there's so many tools and... I mean, yeah, there's 245, 46, 47, etc., etc. tools waiting to go to Chicago. Which tells me production on that line has got to a point where it's so good that we need to increase it again. Uh, but I mean, having a look at Chicago, what's it lacking? It's lacking fuel. Uh, the tools could be better. And I think we will increase the tool output. So let's get a few more trucks for the steel line. And hold on, what do we what what do we use there? So for the tools, it's it is steel and it is wood. So five new trucks for steel, five new trucks for planks, uh, for logs, and then five for planks. So that's not the building I wanted. That's the building I wanted. Uh, so if we go to here, we want you to haul steel. One, two, three, four, five of them. And you are going to be the, where is the steel line? Uh, right there. That's the machines one. Are we just using planks for tools? I think we are. Let's put five new ones in the steel line anyway. And then we want logs. And one, two, three, four, five of those. And they are going to be on the logs from Elgin to planks in Salt Lake City, I believe. And then we want the planks line. One, two, three, four, five of those. And that is going to be... Uh, planks to tools, and maybe we'll do planks to uh, goods as well. Just like so. So planks to goods. And maybe we could do some more good shifting as well if we have a little look. So if we look at goods there, uh, there's not that many up there actually. What are we using to make goods? Planks, and we could use steel, but I think we're using plastic. So that's fine. Uh, the production over here is actually not great. Just looking at it. This thing is... It is actually producing. I guess we're just probably moving a lot of it. We could probably do with moving more construction materials as well, but we'll see how that goes. There are so many people wanting to move around Chicago, though. Like, all of you. So many on the loop. There's, again, so many on the loop. And then that stop as well. I feel like the Chicago loop could use an upgrade as well. So if we go in here, we can get the Chevrolet C60. Chicago Loop, I believe, is bright yellow. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of those. And set those all on the Chicago Loop. That's a lot of vehicles. That is an awful lot of vehicles, but I feel like we're going to do some good stuff with it. I'm also thinking that I want to bring a medium street off of here. And yeah, it's going to remove a couple of buildings, but my thinking here is if we can get that street to sort of go straight through there, that might be a street that uh, gets used a little bit as an alternative way sort of around Chicago without going straight for the main road there. 
I'm also wondering if I uh, would upgrade that straight. Would that be a good idea or a bad idea? Difficult to know. I think I'm going to upgrade it. We're also getting some high rises in there. Look at this. Some beautiful looking buildings right there. Anyone using that road? Yeah, there's a couple of people using that road. Might make things just a little bit easier for Chicago there. Is what I'm thinking anyway. As for here, I mean, there's a lot of people wanting on that line right there. Man, I'm so, I'm so pleased with this. I really am. The only downside is that all the trains on these lines here are sort of clumped together. Uh, so they're all sort of moving as a as a trio, really, which is not really what we want them to do. 72 people on that train line right there. Good Lord. That is kind of ridiculous. But I'm okay with it. I'm definitely thinking that's success. If we have a look down here as well, I mean, 27 people. How many people coming in? 30. I definitely feel like we're not making as much money as we have been. Construction costs this year were pretty high. Last year we actually, yeah, no, we're making money. We're definitely making money. We're just spending a lot on construction from time to time. Which I guess is fine. Uh, as for Salt Lake City, it looks to me like we're gonna need more... More buses on the Salt Lake City line as well. Possibly all of them, really. No, it's mostly Salt Lake City. Okay. Oh, wow. 89 people waiting there. Not bad. What color is the Salt Lake City line? Chicago to SLC is green. Sort of a solid green color. So that one. One, two, three, four, five of those. And Chicago to Salt Lake City. There we go. So that right there should hopefully put us in a good spot. Yeah, a lot of people wanting to go there from Chicago as well. So hopefully we'll see more people get moved around those uh, those ways. I realize we should have got more vehicles on the iron line as well. We are also moving an awful lot of planks down here. Good Lord. Uh, we might have we might have done some damage to our production line there. That's uh, that's a definite possibility, but we'll keep an eye on it and see what happens. So I think just before we wrap things up for today, I'm gonna go ahead and get some buses going around Miami, so that um, people can actually you know use public transport to get around and get to the station if they so desire. So there to there to there and to there. And that is going to be the Miami Loop. So that is B for bus, and uh, it is the my well, we don't do Miami, do we? We do Miami Loop right there. So the Miami Loop now exists. We need to do the same with Tallahassee, which is slightly trickier because it doesn't actually have a loop. So tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a loop. So something like that. Actually, can I get a nice, can I get a nice curve on that? So something kind of like that that comes in to say there and maybe this one can come down like this and curve to that point then this is going to connect straight across and this is, is going to sort of merge over like so yeah that looks fine to me so what we'll do is we'll go back to buses we'll go there we'll go there we'll go up there as well we can stop there, and that should hopefully create a nice loop. So from that point to that one, up to there, and over to there. I realize this loop up here wasn't necessary, but that's fine. So that's going to be another bus line and the uh, Tallahassee loop. So now what we need to do is we need to get vehicles in those lines. We could add vehicle depots to each of the towns, which I guess wouldn't really hurt. So we'll add one to there, right there. And we'll add another one to that spot. Okay, so what color is the Miami loop. It's sort of a pinkish color. So let's get a few of these guys right here. It's sort of um, that color. 
One, two, three, four, five of those on the Miami Loop. And the Tallahassee one was sort of that um, orange-ish color. But we'll go to that in a second. Oh, we just got, we literally just got a new bus. Come on, man. That's not fair. That's not fair. I literally just bought some new buses. All right, whatever. Uh, so that kind of color there. One, two, three, four, five. Set the line to Tallahassee. So out they go. And that should be fine. We'll get people moving around. It's going to be absolutely beautiful. So let's go ahead and make sure all of my lines are now set to replace. So the Miami Loop is going to have replacement vehicles set up as those in that color. Okay. And automatically replace. Uh, the Tallahassee Loop, similar story right there. It's going to be those in that color and auto replace as well. I need to go through all my bus lines and set them to replace, man. That's not fair. That's that's straight up not fair. <laughs> I'm not okay with this. All right, so all of the automatic replacement has been set up. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and just replace all of them right away. Because we have got the money to do it. And I want to see just how expensive it's going to be to do this. As well as the fact I just want the better buses, I think. I think that's going to be a good idea just to get them in right away. Rather than waiting for them to slowly replace over the next couple of years, I just replaced the Santa Rosa look with its own vehicles. Whoops, that's a bit of a mistake on my part. Let's do it again. There we go. Uh, so that right there should be fine. They're all going to go through and slowly replace. The Chicago loop has completely replaced already, which is very interesting. Uh, let's have a little look in here and see what's up. Oh, there they go. Yeah, Chicago Loop is looking a bit better, which is beautiful stuff. As for here, we're looking at, again, 80 passengers waiting to move along that line. I'm really feeling like the frequency of that line could be brought up again. This one right here. It is also making money, which is surprising. Um, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna add another train to it. So, buy trains, multiple units, go for this one in orange, buy it, and set, don't upgrade, uh, set you to, set your line to that one. So there we go, that should be completely fine right there. I realize the trains aren't set to auto replace, which they should be, because we're using the multiple unit one. So that's going to be, in future, I'm going to make that a light blue, and automatically replace. And then for this one, I'm going to make it a... I'm going to make all my trains uniform. I think I want them all to be light blue. I think, I think that'll look nice. Did I just add two of them? I think I did. I, I may have made a mistake there. I don't want two of them. I just want one. Two of those might be a bit much. So there we go. That'll be totally fine. We'll get those automatic, automatically replaced as soon as we can. Oh, wow. There's even more people here. 144 people right now. That's a lot of people. That's so many people using that line right now. And I'm so okay with it. I really... I really am so okay with the number of people that line's moving back and forth. 76 people coming into Chicago. 2.48 million. How much did we spend on new vehicles uh, last year? 13 million, 17 million. Yeah, we're we're losing a couple of million each year with the new vehicle thing, but that's fine. That's kind of to be expected, to be honest. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and leave it there for today. As always, it has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you kind of for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.